my uh, chihuahua's making his cameo appearance. <laughs> Lay down, Louie. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, sorry. My chihuahua is super nosy and he wants to know what I am doing. Um, hey guys, it's Chelsea and today I wanted to talk to you about some shit going down in my life. What else is new? So, yeah, a while ago I made a video called, like, Anxiety and ASMR or something, and that video was me just kind of bringing up to you guys that I felt like I was starting to deal with anxiety, and I didn't know that from that point on it was going to continue to escalate, but it has. Um, anxiety is very interesting, you know, I went through my depression stage, but, um, and I feel like it's easy to know when you're depressed and that it's not normal because you're not, like, depression for me was a whole lot of numbness and a whole lot of just not being myself, whereas anxiety, um, depending on how bad you are, can be a big portion of your life, but it's not... I, like, you can still be yourself and have anxiety. Does that make sense to you guys? Like, you know, like, uh, you'll be yourself. You'll be, ha, 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 I love this, be that, that. And all of a sudden, it'll just hit you. And, you know, you're just, you're anxious. You're freaking out. You're, like, having heart palpitations. You're, and then you get over it eventually. You know, the anxiety attack ends or the anxiousness and everything ends. And you move on. And, um kind of thing, oh, maybe it's just me, and all this kind of stuff. So I think anxiety has been harder for me to kind of realize that it's a problem. It's been a very slow progression of just one thing after another, you know, having panic attacks, being, like, not having a stimuli to make me feel the way that I'm feeling, and it just doesn't make sense, and... It's been, a, it's been a rough road, and um, until recently, I didn't realize how bad it really was. Um, so pretty much, I decided that I had anxiety, and that it wasn't social anxiety, it wasn't medical anxiety, it was just generalized anxiety of certain situations. Um, a main reason why I had to quit my other job was because it was giving me a lot of anxiety. There was so much stress that even if there wasn't a problem, I made a problem because I was just so used to there being a problem. And I just felt so stressed out and so out of breath all the time. So uh, recently, that's just kind of a synopsis of what's been going on. Um, recently, I decided to get on medication. It started affecting my life and like my relationships with people. Um, I did just post a video letting you guys know that I was back with Josh. I will make another video explaining that. That's not what this video is about. But me and him have been back together for a little while actually. I didn't want to come on my channel and say that because in the beginning I didn't know if it was going to last. But um, you know things have been really good so far so we'll see. But um, anyway um, it's been affecting my relationship with him because although he has his problems, do not get me wrong, my anxiety makes problems where there aren't problems, makes situations escalate, you know, like, we got in a fight because one night I was literally just washing my face. This is when I knew it was really bad. Because one night, literally, Josh had done nothing wrong, we'd had whatever of a day, and I was just washing my face and all of a sudden I felt like a train hit me of emotions of just like worrying. Like I just felt so worried and like he's doing this and like I'm such an idiot and like he had been cheating on me and all of these things just came to my mind. And I wanted to talk to him about it and it just, it turned crazy because you know not everyone understands anxiety and understands that you can't control it. And although Josh since then has gotten better about it, like he understands that it's not a choice for me to feel that way, like unlike other emotions in life where you have a choice whether to let things upset you or let things be fine, 
when it comes to anxiety you lose that choice you just feel that frantic way you feel and there's nothing you can do about it but just kind of wait it out and hope that you don't <laughs> damage your relationship with everyone while you're in it but yeah it started affecting my relationship with him it started affecting my relationship with my family and I was like okay like it's time it's time for me to at least go see a doctor I didn't I'm not familiar can you stop panting it's so distracting he's like panting in the middle of the day um anyway um I thought okay it's time to see a doctor and I wasn't familiar with you know anxiety medication and um the kind of unfortunate um way you get treated at the doctor's office when it comes to them is they usually will just write you a prescription to whatever company is kind of like you know giving them bonuses and stuff and you go on your way. I didn't know any of that kind of stuff at the time. I'm not saying that's what my doctor did to me, but I didn't know that, especially when it comes to anxiety medication, depression medication, whatever, um, they just kind of like, do, 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 like, you know, if you don't go see like a psychologist or a psychiatrist or anything, they just write you off a prescription and send you on your way. They, you know, they don't really know what to do. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't know that then, so I went to my doctor and uh, told him how I was feeling, you know, that I felt anxious all the time, that I could never really relax, that it was just a constant worrying about everything and freaking out over nothing and not freaking out when there's actually something happening and just things weren't right. and. You know, he explained to me what anxiety was and that it is basically neurotransmitters not communicating right, either maybe there's not enough or whatever. Um, but he said that was the problem and um, he told me that, you know, medication could really help me. So he put me on Zoloft, which is, uh, what is this called, Sertraline, Sertraline 50 milligrams. This is it. I can't really show you guys because there's too much information on here. But yes, this is my pill bottle. I'm not lying to you guys. This is real. This is legit. Um, so I got put on Sertraline HCL 50 milligram tablet. Take that once a day. I've literally been on this medication since the 7th and today is the 13th. Yesterday hell broke loose. Ever since I've been on that medication, I've felt like shit. I have been so dizzy, so lightheaded. I had no energy. I was tired all the time. And I just thought that these were just side effects. You know, I was told I was going to have to deal with some side effects. So I was like, okay, that's fine. My doctor told me the only side effect I'd have to deal with is nausea. I've never felt nausea since I've been on it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Yesterday shit kind of hit the fan because the other day, you know, I'm feeling all these symptoms thinking they're a direct symptom of this medication. I'm thinking, okay, dizziness is a symptom, lightheadedness is a symptom, tiredness is a symptom, whatever. What I did not realize was that it was actually something else that I believe the medication was doing to me that was causing those symptoms, which it's frustrating because I didn't know high blood pressure was a symptom of this medication. Now it's not normally a symptom, um, but it is a symptom. It's kind of hard. Basically how they explained it to me was um, when they do like 10,000 human trials of a medication before it goes on the market, if one person experiences something it becomes a side effect. So, someone did experience high blood pressure from it, so it is a side effect. However, it's not a common, it's not one people normally get. Like, majority of the people in the trial did not get high blood pressure, therefore, you know, nausea and things like that are the main ones, but not, not high blood pressure. And so, anyway, you know, since I've been on it, I think like a couple days in, my sister took my blood pressure and she was like wow this is really high and I was like well you know what does that mean and she's like I don't know maybe it's because you've been changing positions and stuff blah blah, blah. so then yesterday happened and I had to go to the emergency room 
because I felt so shitty. Now, yesterday was my freaking day off. I have to go to work today, and I'm so pissed because I spent, like, my whole day off feeling like shit in the emergency room, laying down. So, anyway, I took my blood pressure. It was, like, 141... No, 151 over 101, which is somewhat bad. Like, it's it's pretty bad. Normal is 120 over 80. So I have high blood pressure, but not to the extent where we need to start worrying you could have a stroke or a heart attack. Then, within the next half hour to an hour of me just laying down, I had not exerted myself at all. I take it again. It's like 161 over 118, which... You know, they say that you're not going to have, like, a heart attack or stroke unless you have prolonged periods of high blood pressure or you have a really high blood pressure, blood pressure which is, like, 220, like, something crazy over whatever. Um, however, because of my size, because, you know, that would be, like, grown man going to have a heart attack, but because of my size, I was really scared because... I'm smaller and, you know, so I'm not like a stick, but, you know, I'm a smaller woman. So it's like, um, that's actually really <laughs> dangerous for me to have a blood pressure that high for such a consistent amount of time. And I was freaking out because ever since I've been on this medication, I've probably had high blood pressure, but I didn't know that. So I'm sitting here like putting my life on the line because I was going to work while I was on it and all these things just coming home like, oh my God, just thinking it's a medication. So I was in the emergency room for hours yesterday of them, you know, trying to lower my levels. I got an EKG done. I had to get a chest x-ray. They did a urine sample. They did everything. And I was just like... <sighs> All of this because of this freaking medication that I don't even want to be on. And then, you know, I call my doctor freaking out about this before I went to the emergency room. And he tells me, oh, just start cutting the tablet in half. I'm like, fuck no, I don't want to take this anymore. Like, do you guys understand how expensive an emergency room is? And I was like wanting to go to an urgent care facility because those are cheaper. But they said they couldn't handle it because my blood pressure was so high they couldn't handle it. I was like... So I had no choice but to go to the emergency room. We got all those text, tests done, the x-ray and everything. Lord knows how much money that's going to be. All because of this freaking medication. Now, I am super upset because, you know, every time I look about Zoloft online, it's just not good. And to me, it's just not even worth it. So, you know, I called my doctor this morning, told him that, you know... Now the concern is high blood pressure, so every day I have to take my blood pressure a couple times a day and log it down. And I'm just so annoyed, you guys, because it's like I went into this trying to do something better for myself, trying to better my relationship, trying to better my relationship with my family, make things better. And all I've gotten from this situation is just grief and heartache and... It's so frustrating, and I'm not better. Like, my blood pressure's still through the roof right now, but they say it's going to take a couple days for it to fully get out of my system. So, yeah. And my doctor can't see me next week, so I have to wait till like, the 28th of this month to go see him. I'm like, I hope I don't have a fucking heart attack before then. So, yeah. I'm just super, super annoyed and stressed because I... Like I said, like, I went into this wanting to do better for myself and wanting to help myself, and in the end, it just ended up hurting me. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't know if I should see a counselor and try to learn ways to deal with it. I don't know if I should go on, like, some more homeopathic herbal remedies for anxiety. I don't know. But I just wanted to come on here and tell you guys, you know, I haven't heard any good things about anxiety medication, but I wanted to try it because... I thought it would help me, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and the doctor was like, you know, they all have side effects. I'm like, I'm okay with some dizziness. I'm okay with some nausea. I'm not okay with it putting my life on the line. Like, I'd rather just deal with the anxiety. So, anyway, yeah, that's what's going on. <laughs> life is good. No, I'm just kidding. 
Um, so yeah, anyway, that's what's going on, and it has me pretty upset, but, um, yeah. So, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, if you have anxiety, if you're on medication, and whatever you have to say, if you know any good alternative medication, just let me know in the comments below. I am all ears, because I'm so new to this whole situation. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!